geology and landscape are closely related, and we read these relationships through maps. But geological maps are far more than simple spatial catalogues of rocks at the Earth's surface. They tell us about the subsurface and provide a fundamental framework for reconstructing Earth history. And these uses of geological maps have been known since the dawn of the science of geology. The two maps in the corner are part of William Smith's map, the world's first proper geological map, published in 1815. Smith realised that by putting rocks on a map, he could deduce the order in which they were deposited and how they continued into the subsurface. These reasons remain important today, not only for continuing to develop understanding of our planet, but other planets too. This is the first of two videos that takes a look at these ideas using simple cartoons tied back to William Smith's map from the early part of the 19th century and to this rather spectacular map from the state of Pennsylvania, which was put together in the latter part of the 20th century. But let's start with some simple ideas on cartoons. So, we're going to build some stratigraphy, some layers of rocks, and we'll start with this idea of the law of superposition, which says that younger rocks are simply put on top of older to build up a layered sequence like this. Let's think about this in three dimensions. So here we have our layers of rock, one on top of the other. And now let's tilt it. So we have layers of strata inclined down to the right. This orientation we record with a strike and a dip. The strike is the horizontal direction measured as a bearing on the plane of the layering. And the dip is the maximum inclination, which is perpendicular to the direction of strike. Let's erode it. So we're going to have a look at some relationships of rocks in a flat land, so a land with no topography. We have a map along the top and a section along the side, and you'll see that the strata get younger from left to right as you move across the map in the direction of dip. This direction is called the younging direction, so we have a younging direction from left to right as we move across our map. Well, this was recognised by Smith. So here's part of his map for part of Western England. So if you imagine going on a journey from the Forest of Dean to the Marlborough Downs in this direction, you go from coal measures in the Forest of Dean to younger chalk eventually in the Marlborough Downs at the Arrowhead. So the strata young in the direction of dip. Smith was able to use this relationship to build up an idea of succession, in other words, a sequence of rocks that start with the oldest up to the, the younger rocks. Let's go back to our simple cartoon and think about what happens if we increase the dip. So here we have increased the inclination, the dip of our strata, and we can plane it all off again to a flat land, and again the rocks are dipping to the right in our map view. Let's compare the two situations. So the first one on the left has got the, the lower amount of dip. The one on the right has got the higher amount of dip. And you can see that the outcrop pattern has changed as you move from one to the other. Consider the outcrop width of the yellow strata. With a gentle dip on the left, this forms a broad outcrop measured perpendicular to strike. In contrast, when the dip is increased, the outcrop width becomes narrower. So we can use the outcrop width to get a qualitative feel for the inclination of the rocks. But of course, the world is not made of entirely flat land. We need to think about the topographic effects and how these impact on the outcrop pattern for strata. So let's move away from flatland and erode our layers with a landscape. Let's think about the map pattern for this particular block diagram. Here we have a map pattern and it's quite a complicated pattern, certainly more complicated than those flatland patterns of just simple stripes that we had before. It's a complex map pattern. So let's put some features on here that we could recognize on a on a real map 
We can recognize the valleys, they're like streams in. We can recognize the patches in here that are high, high land because they're hills. So we end up with a rather complicated map pattern, even though the geology is really simple. It's horizontally layered strata. But the landscape is, if you like, more complicated. It is incised. These patches of younger rock that are detached in map view from their main outcrop areas are called outliers. And we can recognize outliers on real geological maps. So let's go to the map for the state of Pennsylvania. And here's a small part of it. And we can recognize patches of these mauve rocks that sit surrounded by those um, browny red rocks. Let's zoom in. There we go. So the mauve rocks, which are labeled MC on here, sit on hilltops and are surrounded by the outcrop of the MDCR rocks. The hilltops are outliers, they're MC, and they're incised so you see into the lower layers in the valleys. And you can tell they're valleys because they've got streams running along them. And when the incision is very great, you see through to the even deeper rocks, the older rocks, which are that sort of mustard colour, with the even deeper valleys that run through here. So in order to understand the map pattern, we need to appreciate the landscape, and we can read that off by looking at where the rivers go. The rivers obviously are running in the valleys. Right, now let's make the geology slightly more complicated and put an inclination or dip on the strata. The strata are dipping off away from us, as shown by those symbols, the triangles pointing off in the direction of dip. And now we can incise this landscape by cutting a valley into it. And let's think about what the map pattern for that is. Here we go. So our incision in here with our valley with its stream running along creates a V-shape in the outcrop pattern. We can change the shape of the valley and make it more through going, cutting right across our model like this with a trough going right across. Look at the outcrop pattern for that and it still creates this V-type shape in the outcrop of the geological boundaries as they run across the map area. This is an important feature. It allows us to infer the direction of dip from the behaviour of layers as they cross valleys in their map pattern. Just putting these two together, it doesn't really matter about the shapes of the valleys, the inclined layers will still V into the valley bottoms and the closure of the V points in the direction of dip. It's an important concept called Ving in valleys and it gives the dip direction of the strata. So let's go to part of William Smith map of, of England and we'll move to the Surrey area. You can see the Thames Estuary on the right hand side of the top part of his map. The City of London is tiny on here. And let's look at the behaviour of the green, the southern edge of the green material, which are the chalk rocks of the North Downs. And if we look at this area here, which is where the River Medway cuts across the North Downs, we can see that the base of the chalk cuts in and makes a V-shaped to the north. Let's zoom in. There we go, we've got the Medway picked out and the next Darrant River over to the west showing the same sort of shape. So we can use the confirmation of the V-shapes to show the strata simply dip off to the north. So it tells us that the chalk goes down underneath the Thames and underneath London. So that's a brief introduction to how we can read the geological structure by identifying the outcrop pattern in the landscape as represented on geological maps. We've seen that we can identify the stratigraphic order, a fundamental step if we were to work out a succession of rocks and therefore some earth history. We've seen that we can use the pattern of layers as they cross valleys to infer the direction of dip. We've also seen that we can use the relative outcrop width to get an understanding of how dips change as you move from place to place along a single formation. So far, these are really simple geological structures that we're concerned with, just simply inclined strata. In the next video, we'll look at how we can understand folds.
from the patterns they create on geological maps.